In June 1941, Adolf Hitler's army launched Operation Barbarossa, the largest invasion in history, sweeping into Russia with devastating speed. The Red Army, poorly organized and underprepared, was caught off guard by the rapid blitzkrieg tactics that devastated the Soviet air force on the ground and resulted in the encirclement and annihilation of entire army groups. The Germans encountered minimal resistance at this stage as their panzers advanced unopposed, decimating a vast number of Soviet tanks and equipment. But not everything went Germany's way. They were taken by surprise by a new Soviet tank, the T-34, which advanced on German forces like a prehistoric monster, shrugging off fire from half a dozen German tanks and destroying panzers with ease. Known for its remarkable balance of firepower, mobility, and protection, the T-34 proved to be a significant and highly effective tank. German Field Marshal von Kleist lauded the T-34 as the best tank of World War II, while Panzer leader General Heinz Guderian acknowledged it as vastly superior over contemporary German tanks in the early stages of the war. However, despite its strengths, a significant number of T-34s, approximately 45,000, were lost in battle during the war. While the T-34's design was revolutionary, closer inspection reveals some critical flaws. Join us as we explore the strengths and weaknesses of the T-34, dissect historical battle strategies, and uncover the true reasons behind these significant losses. The first T-34 rolled off the assembly line in 1940, born from the lessons learned during the Spanish Civil War where the first World War-era Soviet tanks were outclassed by their more modern German counterparts. The T-34 boasted superior firepower, armor, and mobility compared to German tanks of the time. One of its most groundbreaking features was its sloped armor, a seemingly minor design detail that significantly influenced future tank designs and gave the T-34 a distinct advantage on the battlefield. At the onset of the German invasion, Soviet operational units possessed only 967 T-34 tanks. Despite this relatively small number, the T-34 left a significant mark. Sociologically, the German command was astonished that the lesser Slavs could produce an equal, if not superior, weapon. Practically, German troops found themselves dismayed as their anti-tank rounds bounced harmlessly off the T-34's sloped sides, highlighting the tank's formidable defensive capabilities. Despite the T-34's technical superiority, its effectiveness in early battles in Ukraine was severely hampered by improper implementation. The familiar Soviet narrative unfolded tank crews were inadequately trained. Many drivers had less than five hours of experience behind the wheel, gunners had never operated a tank gun, and some crews had never even laid eyes on the T-34 before the outbreak of war. This led to poor decision-making, improper maintenance, and an inability to fully leverage the tank's advantages. This lack of training was compounded by the aftermath of Stalinist purges, which decimated half of the armor division's officer corps, further crippling the tank's combat readiness. The German approach to training was markedly superior, emphasizing both tactical flexibility and gunnery skills, facilitated by the use of radios. German crews were encouraged to learn from their mistakes and experiment with different strategies. In contrast, Russian training was far more draconian. Soviet crews were punished for taking initiative, leading to rigid, predictable tactics that typically involved charging straight ahead in a limited number of formations. This left the T-34 tanks vulnerable to being overwhelmed and outmaneuvered 
by the German combined arms approach. In the initial phases of the war, the Soviets tended to use their T-34 tanks in overly aggressive frontal assaults. This played into the strengths of the German anti-tank weapons and tactics, leading to high tank losses. Additionally, Soviet armor divisions were drastically undersupplied, possessing only a fraction of the necessary radios, spare parts, ammunition, and general supplies. These logistical shortcomings were further compounded by a lack of accurate information on German positions and the absence of meaningful artillery support. As military technology historian Steven Zaloga notes, the enormous shortcoming in training and tactics demonstrated by Red Army tank units rendered the T-34 a very blunt sword during Operation Barbarossa. Until the introduction of the T-34-85 in 1944, only company commanders among T-34 units were equipped with radio sets. Due to shortages, the remainder of the company's tanks relied on signal flags for communication during battles. However, flags proved ineffective in the chaotic conditions of combat, quickly becoming useless amidst smoke and dust. Coupled with poor tactics, T-34 crews found it challenging to maintain coherence and fluidity in battle. Consequently, Soviet commanders often resorted to the costly strategy of leveraging their numerical advantage to overwhelm the enemy. The T-34's design featured a cramped, two-man turret housing the loader and commander or gunner. This configuration placed a heavy burden on the commander, who was tasked with maintaining situational awareness, directing the driver, locating targets, and operating the gun. Consequently, he was severely overworked, unable to perform any of these tasks to a high standard. The loader faced his own set of challenges. While the tank initially stored nine rounds in ready racks on the hull compartment sides, once depleted, he had to retrieve the hefty 21 pounds rounds from bins located under a rubber mat on the hull floor. Compounding this difficulty was the absence of a turret basket, requiring the loader to shuffle around the hull as the turret rotated around him. These operational limitations hindered the T-34's crew from matching the efficiency of German tanks in accurately engaging targets. Though recognized by Soviet high command, this issue remained unaddressed until the introduction of the T-34-85 in 1944. While the sloped armor design proved effective, it came at the cost of interior space. The cramped interior, compounded by the angled armor and Christie suspension, posed severe challenges to the crew. The limited interior space led to the incorporation of fuel cells in the sides of the hull, which posed a significant risk. If hit by armor-piercing rounds, these fuel cells could be breached, further endangering the crew and compromising the tank's operational effectiveness. A U.S. study during the Korean War found that a penetration by an anti-tank round often resulted in the tank's destruction and the loss of 75% of the crew compared to just 18% in the Sherman tank. Improvements in German tank and anti-tank guns meant that the T-34 quickly became vulnerable to frontal hits. Further complicating matters were significant variations in armor strength, manufacturing methods, and composition observed in T-34s. At its worst, these discrepancies had fatal consequences for the crews. Armor that was too brittle to penetrate might still cause harm, as small metal pieces would flake off inside the tank, becoming shrapnel, a phenomenon known as spalling. Moreover, the welds and joints between armor plates were of poor quality. This allowed rainwater to seep in, leading to electrical failures, and made the tank susceptible to weapons like petrol bombs. Additionally, 
welds frequently cracked after being impacted by a round, further compromising the tank's integrity. In combat, one of the most severe disadvantages faced by T-34s was their limited visibility. Until late 1942, commanders lacked a dedicated cupola, relying instead on a single periscope with a narrow field of view. Compounding this issue was Soviet doctrine, which mandated entering battle with all hatches closed. Consequently, the commander's seat lacked a height adjustment to allow the commander to survey the battlefield, unlike their German counterparts who often kept their heads exposed to maintain situational awareness. The driver also faced challenges, with only a forward-facing vision slit available when their hatch was closed. Moreover, they often couldn't rely on the commander for assistance, as the commander was typically preoccupied with operating the gun. Other crew members had similarly limited visibility, with only small vision slits available for observation. This resulted in the tank being effectively blind on the battlefield. German reports noted that T-34s were slow to react to incoming fire, allowing German gunners to fire multiple shots before the T-34s could return fire. In a notable incident, an anti-tank crew fired 23 rounds at one T-34, jamming its turret ring. While this showcased impressive armor protection, it also underscored the T-34's vulnerability due to its limited visibility. This issue wasn't fully addressed until 1944. If a tank boasts superior armor, firepower, and mobility but consistently breaks down before reaching battle, can it truly be considered a good tank? This logic, often applied to heavy German tanks, is also relevant to the T-34. In 1941, the T-34's V-12 engine reportedly had an average lifespan of only 100 hours. By 1942, T-34s could reliably travel only 22 miles before breaking down. Officially, Nikolai Fedorenko, head of the Armored Directorate of the Red Army, stated that the average mileage of the T-34 did not exceed 125 miles before requiring an overhaul. These reliability issues significantly undermine the tank's battlefield effectiveness, despite its impressive design features. Turret rotation motors on the T-34 frequently failed, engine air filters allowed dirt and dust to enter, transmissions were prone to break down, and early tracks were weak and often snapped. The vehicle losses due to mechanical failures were staggering. Out of over 57,000 T-34s produced during the war, 44,900 were lost. It is reported that 40% of these losses were due to mechanical or logistic failures. Overall, between 1941 and 1945, the Soviets lost an unfathomable 96,600 armored fighting vehicles. These statistics highlight the significant reliability issues that plagued the T-34 and the broader Soviet armored forces throughout the war. As the war progressed, the T-34 began to demonstrate greater effectiveness on the battlefield, notably during the summer campaign of 1943. Interestingly, despite the Germans narrowing the technological gap between the T-34 and their Tiger and Panther tanks, Soviet tactics had evolved significantly. Soviet commanders recognized that mechanized warfare was not solely determined by individual tank engagements, but rather by the massive clash of combined armed forces. The T-34's relatively low cost and ease of production allowed the Red Army to amass a significant numerical advantage in armor. This facilitated a new tactic, overwhelming the German Panzer divisions with large numbers of T-34s. This strategy proved highly effective against the stretched and overextended German forces. 
Despite the dire circumstances, T-34 tank crews fought valiantly throughout the war. Facing overwhelming odds, mechanical failures, and limited training, these crews displayed remarkable bravery and resilience. Ultimately, the seemingly endless supply of T-34s played a crucial role in pushing back the German forces and initiating the advance towards Berlin. 